This is the Youth Bible with Nicky and Pippa Gumbel, day 120. We often think that we must work hard to achieve our goals or get what we want in life. However, the truth is that everything we need is already ours. In Christ Jesus, we've been given everything we need to live an abundant life. All we need to do is take possession of what is already ours. The question is, how do we do this? My maternal grandparents lived in the small fishing village of Pittenweem, near Edinburgh, in Scotland. They owned a house there. In 1939, at the start of World War II, they let their home to tenants. When the war ended, they wanted to return to their home, but they were unable to. The law at the time allowed the tenants to remain in the house for as long as they lived, at approximately the same rent, with no adjustment for inflation. For 50 years, my grandparents were unable to get possession of the house they owned. My uncle inherited the house from my grandparents. By the time he got possession, the condition of the house had deteriorated greatly. He sold it for a very small sum. Although my family owned this house in Pittenweem, they never took possession of it. There's a big difference between ownership and possession. The people of Israel had been given ownership of Canaan, the promised land. Now Joshua says to the Israelites, How long will you wait before you begin to take possession of the land. The New Testament presents the land as a picture of the Christian life. Realize what is already yours in Christ Jesus and then take possession of it. From Proverbs 10 and 11. From the mouth of the righteous comes the fruit of wisdom, but a perverse tongue will be silenced. Wealth is worthless in the day of wrath but righteousness delivers from death. The righteousness of the blameless makes their paths straight, but the wicked are brought down by their own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright delivers them, but the unfaithful are trapped by evil desires. Gift of Righteousness Do you realise that God has already given to you the gift of righteousness? Have you taken possession of this gift? The writer of Proverbs contrasts the wicked with the righteous. Wickedness will lead to destruction. The unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. The wicked are brought down by their own wickedness. Most significantly of all, wickedness is undone by death. When the wicked die, their hope perishes. All they expected from their power comes to nothing. On the other hand, righteousness delivers from death. This is one of the arguments the Apostle Peter uses about Jesus on the day of Pentecost. Righteousness cannot rot. It was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. No one is totally righteous except Jesus. Righteousness means right relationships, both with God and with other people. You receive this righteousness from God as a gift by faith. But you have to take possession of it. You have to live it out. In this passage, we see some examples of what this means. First, wisdom. A good person's mouth is a clear fountain of wisdom. A foul mouth is a stagnant swamp. The speech of a good person clears the air. The words of the wicked pollute it. Second, humility. The stuck-up fall flat on their faces, but down-to-earth people stand firm. Third, integrity. The integrity of the upright guides them. A principled life can stand up to the worst. Integrity should be our guide. The first question to ask is always, what is the right thing to do in this situation? Fourth, character. Moral character makes for smooth travelling. Good character is the best insurance. Lord, I take possession of your gift of righteousness by faith. Help me to live a life of wisdom, humility, integrity, and good character. New Testament from John 1 The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. 
I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. When John gave this testimony, I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him, and I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen, and I testify, that this is God's chosen one. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. The next day Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, Follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. Gift of the Holy Spirit Are you enjoying everything Jesus has made possible for you? Or are you still feeling guilty and powerless? Jesus came to bring forgiveness, new life and the power of the Holy Spirit to you. Make sure you take possession of what is already yours today. In this passage, we see a remarkable sequence of the titles given to Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God, Messiah, King of Israel, and Son of Man. I want to focus particularly on two titles in this passage that describe the ministry of Jesus. First, Sin Remover. The blood of the Lamb saved the Israelites from slavery and allowed them to walk in freedom to the promised land. John says of Jesus, Look, the Lamb of God! who takes away the sin of the world. As you come to Jesus, he takes away your sins. Claim, trust, believe in the forgiveness bought for you. Actively reject feelings of guilt, shame or unworthiness. It is a proactive, practical daily choice to take possession of the forgiveness that Jesus has made possible for you. Second, Spirit Baptizer. John the Baptist describes Jesus as the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Jesus fills you with his Holy Spirit. This is what Jesus has made possible for you. However, you have to take possession of this wonderful gift that God has made available for you. Jesus invited Philip, follow me. The Greek word for to follow means not only to walk in the footsteps, but also to accompany, to be with. When they asked Jesus, where are you staying? The Greek word for staying is the same word Jesus uses in John 15. Remain in me as I remain in you. They see where Jesus is staying and remain with him. Jesus invites you too into a deep personal friendship with him. Jesus also gives you the opportunity to do what John the Baptist did, to point others to him. Of course, God does not need a human agent. Jesus could continue his ministry without our help. However, we see in this passage how God uses his disciples to call people. They bring their friends to Jesus. John the Baptist introduces Andrew. Andrew introduces Peter. And Philip introduces Nathaniel. Nathaniel was suspicious at first, but then he came and immediately found that Jesus really was the Son of God. The former Archbishop of Canterbury, William Temple, wrote a commentary on John's Gospel. When he came to the words, And he, Andrew, brought him, Simon Peter, to Jesus, Temple wrote a short but momentous sentence. The greatest service that one person can do to another. Simon Peter went on to be one of the most significant influences in the history of Christianity. You may not be able to do what Peter did, but you can do what his brother Andrew did. You can bring someone to Jesus. Or, just like Philip, you can say, come and see, to your friends, family and work colleagues. You can be a part of God's plan for people to hear about and respond to Jesus as you invite them to come and see. I have found there's nothing more exciting in life than being involved in the ministry of Jesus. 
It's so gracious of God to involve us, imperfect human beings, in his perfect plan. Lord, help me today to enjoy this gift of forgiveness and the fullness of life in the Holy Spirit. Help me also to introduce others to you, to invite people to come and see. Old Testament from Joshua 17 and 18 So Joshua said to the Israelites, How long will you wait? before you begin to take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has given you. Gift of your inheritance. Is there some area of your life where you are still not enjoying your inheritance in Christ? The land was the inheritance of the people of God. Joshua addressed the people of Israel. How long are you going to sit around on your hands, putting off taking possession of the land that God, the God of your ancestors, has given you? Here, once again, we see the great difference between ownership and possession and enjoyment of the land. Israel was given the ownership of the land before they took possession and enjoyment. When you follow Jesus, you become his friend. You receive forgiveness, justification, the righteousness of God and the Holy Spirit. You become a child of God. You have power over sin and access to God. You have victory over demonic powers. You have peace with God. You have authority over evil in your life and the lives of others. All the promises of God belong to you. This is your inheritance in Christ. You may not always necessarily take possession and fully enjoy the blessing of all these things in your life. Here God says in effect to his people, Don't you realize I've given all of this to you? What are you waiting for? You may have given your life to Jesus, but have you allowed him to possess every aspect of how you live? your finances, work, prayer life, friends and family. In my experience, this is a lifetime task. St. Paul writes that you need to take every thought captive to obey Christ. In some areas, the victory may be immediate. In others, it may be more gradual. You have to drive out even the little pockets of resistance. As Israel received the land as a gift from the Lord, so you and I have received in Jesus every spiritual blessing. The question is, how long will you wait? before you begin to take possession of these gifts. Lord, thank you that you've blessed me in Christ with every spiritual blessing. Help me today to take possession of what is already mine by faith through Jesus. Pippa adds, In John 1 verse 48 it says, How do you know me? Nathaniel asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were under the fig tree before Philip called you. Jesus sees you wherever you are, whatever you are doing. You are known by him. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you give me everything I need. Help me to take a hold of what you give me. Help me to trust in you in knowing that you give me everything I need for life and that I need nothing more but to be in a relationship with you. I pray this in your son's name. Amen.